else loves s'mores? I'm gonna be honest, if it has s'mores in the name, I am gonna try it. Even though I know full well it's probably gonna taste nothing like a s'more. S'more ice cream? There. S'more M&Ms? Got it. S'moreos? Sign me up. That's why when I see the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man and Ghostbusters, all I want is the giant Hershey bar guy and the oversized graham cracker lad to show up. That's when we're having a party, my friends. That's when. <laughs> Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that asks questions about movies that others are too afraid to ask, or have too much self-respect to ask, but I'll let you decide which one it is. Man, in a summer crammed full with movies, there's one that everyone is talking about. Ghostbusters. But maybe not quite for the right reasons. I mean, the original 1984 version is an undisputed classic, holding down a 97% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But then fast forward to today, where the CGI filled all features female reboot trailer is currently the most disliked movie trailer in the history of YouTube. Let me say that again. The most disliked trailer in the history of YouTube. Really? Really, internet? This is so much worse than this? Are you going bald? Huh? No, 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 you're getting fatter, and your hair doesn't realize it needs to cover more face. Okay. Hey, I'm not judging. There is no accounting for taste. And I understand the comedic stylings of Adam Sandler truly are transcendent. Oh. Comedy gold. So the goal for today, make a video that you like at least slightly better than the Ghostbusters trailer. Well, I'm already starting at an advantage because this video focuses on the original Ghostbusters, reminding you of that happier era when watching a baby get repeatedly put into life-threatening situations was the epitome of entertainment. Truly, when you think of the original movie, yeah, sure, you had Crossing Streams and the demonic David Bowie, but the most iconic image is none other than the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. It's a moment so brilliantly absurd it became an instant classic. And while others were chortling away at Dan Aykroyd's childhood memories of roasting marshmallows by the fire at Camp Wakanda, here's where my theorist brain went when I first saw that scene. Could I eat that? And sure, maybe there's some fat pat talking there, but hey, it's all in the name of science. So today I'm answering the question that's been on no Nobody's mind since 1984. How many calories are in the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man? And what would it mean if I were to actually eat him? Now, for those of you who grew up not knowing who you're gonna call, here's the skinny on our chubbiest of bunnies. In the original Ghostbusters, the team takes on an ancient Sumerian demon named Gozer who's haunting New York City. As you do, you know, the huge. As part of the final showdown, Gozer demands the heroes choose what will destroy them and the rest of New York City. While everyone else tries to keep their minds blank, our good buddy Dan Aykroyd accidentally imagines to think of the most harmless thing. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And you can't really blame him because images of Stay Puffed are sprinkled throughout the movie. When we see the eggs in Dana's apartment explode and cook on the counter, a bag of Stay Puffed Marshmallows are there on the counter with the rest of the groceries. And later in the film, we see a big mural for Stay Puffed Marshmallows on the side of a building. With all those brand integrations, poor Ray didn't stand a chance. Subliminal advertising, guys. You gotta put a hashtag spawn on those sorts of things. Sellouts. Anyway, the great big Mallow Blaster appears, Godzilla style and starts pounding Upper Manhattan into fluff. Hilarity ensues. So let's figure out just how much marshmallow action the Kaiju Puff is packing. To do this, we need to make some assumptions about the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man's contents. Let's just say that he's made entirely of marshmallow. Normally, I'd say he'd need some kind of musculoskeletal system to maneuver, but seriously, he's a giant snack food manifested out of Dan Aykroyd's subconscious and compelled by a demon of hell. So we're gonna let normal anatomy slide on this one. Plus, when he erupts, there ain't no viscera, just a bunch of marshmallow flies. So I think we're safe. Now the first step in determining how much of a caloric punch Stay Puff packs is determining just how large he is. In the movie, they give us a hint. You're killed by a hundred foot marshmallow man. But can we get more exact? Absolutely. In the DVD extras for Ghostbusters, Mark Stetson, the model shop supervisor, reveals that the scaled size of the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man was 112 and a half feet tall. We can also compare that to the surrounding buildings to confirm that that's the right range. So for once, that made my life a bit easier, but from there, the calculations start to get a bit trickier. Initially, I tried to determine the width of the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man by looking at his scale compared to the other landmarks in the movie. There's a shot where the Ghostbusters are looking down at Stay 
puffed as he walks towards them, and we can see that he's about the width from the sidewalk to the yellow center lines of the street. We know that this is about 50 feet because the street Stay Puffed is walking on is Central Park West in New York. According to the 1892 edition of the World Almanac, almost all avenues in New York City are 100 feet wide, so Stay Puffed is half that. But we'd still be missing depth, and the movie doesn't really show many good shots from the side. And more importantly, even if we're right about Stay Puffed being 50 feet wide at his widest, how wide is his head compared to the rest of his body? If you watch this series a lot, you'll know that I would usually account for this sort of thing using pixel measurements. But Stay Puffed is full of a lot of unusual shapes and sizes. So in this case, I'm using another measurement that'll do a better job of taking Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man's irregular shape and giving us workable numbers. And that measurement is BMI. The statistic of BMI was created in the 19th century and is mostly used to measure the relative thickness or thinness of a population by measuring average weight across average height. And for our purposes, it's actually perfect, because all it does is calculate a ratio of height to width for a human-shaped object. It doesn't matter if the person is ripped or overweight or happens to be composed entirely of sugar. And looking at the Marshmallow Man, he's not just a bunch of cylindrical marshmallows stacked together. He's got folds and girth to them. He's much more human than he is purely geometric. So knowing that, take a look at this chart of body shapes and their associated BMIs. Stay Puffed is round and has relatively thick limbs. From a purely scientific perspective, Stay Puffed's shape indicates that he would have a very high BMI. And judging by the figures, a BMI of 40 is a good estimate. Perhaps even a slightly conservative one. Hey, we will have no candy shaming on this channel, okay? But now that we have a height and a projected BMI for the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, we can calculate how much he would weigh. Or, more accurately, we can determine how much a human being his size would weigh, and then go from there. The formula for body mass index states that BMI is equal to 703 times a person's weight in pounds divided by their height in inches squared. Stay Puffed's height is 112.5 feet, which translates to 1,350 inches. When we square the height and then multiply the BMI of 40 by that number and then divide the result by 703, we have isolated weight of 103,698 pounds. But now, before you rage in the comments, no, obviously he doesn't weigh 103,000 pounds. Like I said, that would be the weight of the Stay Puffed Man... Man. If the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man were actually just a, a human of Marshmallow Man size, well, you get it. What we're looking for is the Marshmallow Man. So we need to convert his weight from this figure, what he would weigh as a human, to what he would weigh as a marshmallow. To do that, we need to know what the density of a human and a marshmallow actually are. The density of a human being does vary, but for heavier set people, it's usually around 1.01 grams per milliliter. Now we can adjust the weight of 103,698 pounds to its marshmallow equivalent by converting human density to the density of a marshmallow, which is 0.21 grams per milliliter, about a fifth of the density of a human. So doing all the math, that means that Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man actually weighs in at 21,561 pounds, or about 9,500 kilograms, which is actually surprisingly light for a building-crushing monster. For perspective, that's lighter than a typical school bus, so having him destroy buildings may be a bit of a stretch. He's still a giant marshmallow. Even at that enormous of a size, his squishy Stay Puffedness would actually just puff off of most well-made buildings. But I hear you in the comments saying, geez, MatPat, I came here because I want to eat an ancient Sumerian demon and not talk about school buses. And yeah, that's valid. I totally understand your desire to eat an ancient Sumerian demon. So now that we know how much he weighs, figuring out the number of calories he contains is really no sweat. For reference, I use the nutrition facts of Kraft's Jet Puffed Marshmallows because something tells me they're not all that different. Which claims to have 100 calories for every 4 marshmallows or 30 grams. 20 grams of which is pure sugar. When we convert the weight of Stay Puffed in pounds to grams and then multiply that by the number of calories per gram, we get our whopping total. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man comes out to be 32.6 million calories. Get ready to hit that Pilates class a few hundred thousand times. If you wanted to consume that many calories, you'd have to down about 228,000 cans of Coca-Cola, or eat 2.7 million peanut M&Ms, or have 62 1,700 Big Mac meals from the Golden Arches. Considering that the average human life is 27,375 days, you would practically have to have that Big Mac meal three times a day, every day for the rest of your life to get to that level of caloric intake. Which in turn begs the question, what about burning him off? Well, a good rule of thumb is that a typical person will burn 100 calories per mile of walking. So that would translate to you walking 326,000 miles to work off your Marshmallow Man binge. 
range. And if that sounds like a lot, you don't know the half of it. The circumference of the Earth is just about 25,000 miles. So you would have to walk around the entire globe 13 times to burn off that Sumerian demon you consumed. Man, I knew I should have ordered off the lighter menu. The Caesar salad titan was calling my name. Considering the average caloric intake for a man is about 2,000 a day, that's nearly 44 years worth of calories in a single serving. Hungry? Why wait? Eat a marshmallow, man. You'll be set for life. And talk about your sugar rush. One 100-foot-tall marshmallow man is the equivalent of 6.52 million grams of sugar. That's seven American tons. The equivalent of a fully grown adult African elephant made entirely of sugar. It's nearly one and a half million Oreo cookies. Single stuffed. Which, let's be honest, is clearly inferior to double stuffed, so it's actually a million double stuffed Oreos. You may have also seen studies about how much humans have increased their sugar intake over the course of our history. It's estimated to have risen 600% over the last 140 years. We now consume 130 pounds or 60,000 grams of sugar every year, which admittedly is a lot. But even in the face of this huge increase of sugar intake, Stay Puffed represents 108 years of constantly shoving sugar into your face. So needless to say, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man doesn't seem to be part of a balanced diet. But the big question of the day still remains. Could you eat him? Technically, the answer is yes, but the fine print would say, not for very long. The problem is with the sugar. Toxicologists believe that a lethal dose of sugar for a human being is about 15 grams per kilogram of weight. I say believe because these are estimates. Apparently, it's pretty hard to find test subjects who are willing to eat sugar until they die. Go figure. Sometimes it feels like I come close to that, though. Sorry, that's Fat Pat talking again. For a 150-pound adult, that lethal dose would be between 2 and 2.5 two and pounds of sugar or about 1,000 grams, which, all things considered, isn't all that much. If you were committed to eating the beast, he would kill you 6,500 times over before you were done. Which means, in an ironic twist, the scariest thing about Stay Puft isn't his physical force, remember he's punching with less strength and density than a school bus, and it isn't crossing the streams, it's in fact his sugar content. Forget getting stepped on, he would literally kill you before you gnawed his toe off. But hey, that's just a thing. Theory. A film theory. And cut. But before I sign off, do you want to win $50,000? How about winning up to $2,000 every day for the rest of July? It sounds like it's a scheme, but it's not. I was selected to host a new reality competition series called The Runner for the entire month of July. And you guys, you at home, have the opportunity to win a bunch of cash. Basically, The Runner is a cross-country manhunt as a secret super soldier tries to make his way across the United States without getting caught. If he does it, he wins $500,000. But this is where you come in. It's up to five chaser teams and you guys online helping them to track him down and win that money for yourself by solving clues delivered live by me during a broadcast at the start of each day. You guys are theorists. You're totally gonna crush this. You win money by doing brain puzzles. That's it. So you interested? I hope so because it's legitimately really cool. It's a new series not on YouTube but on Go90. Hosted by yours truly and executive produced by Jason Bourne and Bat Fleck himself. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Yeah, this is legit. The chase officially begins tomorrow, July 1st. And to kick things off, the show is giving away $50,000 to lucky viewers. $50,000 tomorrow, so you'll definitely want to tune in on day one. To do that, you'll want to go to go90.com slash the runner or download the Go90 app to watch the show. Don't worry, it's all free and links are in the description. First episode starts at noon Eastern. Coast time or 9 a.m. Pacific July 1st. From there, I'll be coming to you live to explain more on how to win. But again, everything is totally free. None of this affects the flow of episodes or us doing regular GT Live live streams. It's just really a chance for me to live out my bucket list item of being a game show host and giving you guys the chance to win easy to win cash, all while participating in a pretty cutting edge show where you guys over social media are tracking down a super soldier stealthing his way across the country. So please consider checking it out live every day of July, starting at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And with that said, let the chase begin.